Hey there, welcome to this edition of Take 5 with Tony. Today we're going to talk about our trade policy and food and farming. You know, a lot of folks have heard the expression, usually attributed to Albert Einstein, that the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, but expect different results. Now, I don't really know if Einstein said that, but I'll tell you, that's a perfect description of the United States free trade policy for the last 20 years. From NAFTA to CAFTA, the Central American Free Trade Agreement, from the World Trade Organization to the 2012 agreement with South Korea, right through to today's Trans-Pacific Partnership, we keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting somehow different results. Now, a professor, an agriculture economics professor from the University of Tennessee, a fellow named Harwood Schaefer looked at our agriculture exports and imports from shortly after the signing of NAFTA right through to 2014. He wrote his analysis up in the New Jersey Farmer. This is not a lefty labor magazine. It ain't Mother Jones or The Nation. This is a little publication for and by farmers in the ag industry. And what Dr. Schaefer found is really quite telling. Let's start with Mexico. At the time NAFTA was signed, we had a little more than a hundred million dollar annual surplus in crops with Mexico. That's grains and produce and vegetables. By the 2014 year, we had a two and a half billion dollar deficit. And it wasn't just crops. The same pattern held for livestock and meats, for fisheries and aquaculture, even for forest. <laughs> so much so that the total deficit over the course of the 18 years with Mexico was nearly $10 billion. Canada, same pattern, but even worse. With Canada, we have seen small surpluses grow into big deficits and modest deficits grow into huge deficits. So much so that over the 18 years, our trade imbalance with Canada has grown by over $30 billion. Now that's just farm and forest products. If we looked at manufactured goods, with Mexico, not to mention China, many, many, many times greater. So we've been doing the same thing over and over and somehow expecting different results. Now, when you have many, many more imports than you have exports, there's consequences. You lose jobs, businesses close, farms go bankrupt, rural communities experience decline. Not only that, but you can see tremendous problems in the environment and reductions in our ability to raise our own food and protect our own food safety. Public Citizens, a great organization, they did a page-by-page -page analysis of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And what they found was that these patterns, 20 years since NAFTA, are not changed by the TPP. In fact, if anything, the TPP makes these things worse. We'll look at one thing specifically in this instance, and it is the safety of our food. Our USDA regulates food coming in from foreign countries, and they've been relaxing standards for meat and eggs and other items coming into the country, reducing funds for inspectors and for audits of other countries. What the TPP does on top of that is it actually gives rights to foreign corporations to challenge our food safety laws. They can challenge our fundamental food safety laws and make them into unfair trade practices. Even to the point that they can challenge a specific inspector at a dock saying that a specific item is not safe or it's too risky for our food supply. So ever since NAFTA, We've been looking at trade policy that has increased our deficits dramatically, has put millions of people out of, the work, out of work, shuttered tens of thousands of businesses, closed many farms, and made our environment, health, and safety more precarious. The TPP makes all of that worse. Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, it definitely is the definition of insanity. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.